60 gigahertz is not new technology. And so in my preparation for this, I uh, found an article from Ars Technica in December of 2016 talking about uh, 4.6 gigabits Wi-Fi and 60 gigahertz. So this is not a new idea. So I'm hoping that Darren, you can help uh, you know illuminate uh, some some of those questions for me. Give me give me some answers. What's up with 60 yeah. gigahertz? Well, you know what, uh, Cameron, there, there are no easy, easy questions, I can tell you. Uh, but, but this 2016 is not the first time we've heard about it either. Um, I think I started hearing about 60 gigahertz technology 10 or more years ago. Uh, the idea back then, many years ago, was that we would use this for uh, maybe a laptop docking station or a multimedia station or something like that. Maybe replace the audio cables in your home theater system. Um, but none of that really, really worked out. It's like uh, an old engineer I used to work with, great, fantastic uh, guy who really designed a lot of systems. He used to say, I used to share these ideas with him and he'd just go, hmm, shows thought needs work. Uh, it was kind of his, his thing. And, and, and that's what this means, right? 60 gigahertz for a long time was shows thought needs work. It needs a lot of work. And I think we've done the work, right? We've put in the time, we've put in the effort. And, and now we've used that same, same basic uh, you know, frequency and we've kind of reimagined how we're going to use it and how we're going to deploy it. So now we're looking at multi-gigabit broadband networks using that frequency. But that's not all there is to it. Um, you know, we're looking at getting, moving this technology outdoors, not just putting it inside a house or a, or a conference room where it has a limited capability, limited use case. But now we take it outdoors, we add carrier type features like, like, um, like carrier aggregation. So we can now double the bandwidth, we can get more connectivity, transmit faster, lower latency, uh, extremely lower latency, now down into the, into the microseconds so that we can support these really high bandwidth uh, applications. Uh, Alan, do you wanna jump in there? Sure, um, so you're right, 60 gigahertz is not new, uh, but in the past, 60 gigahertz is mainly used for point to point. And also not many country opened the 60 gigahertz as well. <laughs> With the, uh, you know, the technology moving, the regulatory body also moving, we see more and more 60 gigahertz has been opened globally. You know, in US uh, has opened 12 gigahertz. Same thing in Canada, in Japan, in Europe, uh, the like in uh, Czech, uh, Czech, in UK, they just opened the 60 gigahertz as unlicensed band. So now make the 60 gigahertz not only for P2P, it can also use for point to multipoint. More than that, the technology also evolving. Now we have the new standard, new standard coming out, the 11AY standard, makes 60 gigahertz more suitable for a high density deployment. And given the natural uh, characters, the oxygen absorption, you know, really makes 60 gigahertz an ideal spectrum for those high capacity, high density, short distance deployment. And, uh, you know, we know the five gigahertz um, can do the coverage uh, and they can do the penetration and they come with the 60 gigahertz as a uh, composite with that, we can do high capacity, short, short range line of set connection. So this, may, this makes, uh, you know, 60 gigahertz a good fit or uh, an unnecessary toolbox uh, for your network design. Yeah, you know, Alan, that's a lot of, it's a lot of tech talk. And I think you, you and I are dropping some, some of that tech talk on people, but you know, we, 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 get the, we get the privilege of working with engineers all day and, and, uh, and that's, that's a great experience. But, but you know, at the end of the day, that doesn't build a network, right? Frequencies mm -hmm. don't build a network. One product does not support your business. It doesn't work. Uh, so what, what, what we're doing with this technology is we're taking this and we're, we're partnering with companies like uh, Facebook Telegraph. We're an early adopter of that technology. Gets us redundant multi-input mesh technology uh, to really build out a resilient network. Uh, it's multi-gig, redundant. So that's what, we're, that's what we're doing. That service providers are gonna benefit from that. Well, who else? What about, what about an enterprise systems integrator? You know, the guy whose who's bread and butter is deploying enterprise networks inside the building and outside of a building. Well, now that guy can use this same technology quickly, repeatably, and predictably. He can connect up multiple buildings. It could be two or three buildings, four buildings in a, in a, a you know, third party logistics uh, campus area. Could be higher education, you know, campus, uh, higher education campus. Any place you need to start to connect buildings together, that enterprise systems integrator, he's gonna, he's gonna love this because keyword there is repeatable and predictable. That's, that's, a, super, that's a super advantage of this um, technology. 
One more, one more. How about municipal Wi-Fi? Municipal Wi-Fi. Uh, there's a Canalis report that, that Cambium saw that talks about outdoor Wi-Fi growth is, is 9% year over year. It's growing fast, fast growing market. Um, other, other sources say there's going to be hundreds of millions of Wi-Fi hotspots in just a few years around the globe. So if you're a municipal network, why are you doing this? Well, you wanna give people connectivity to municipal resources. You wanna get your staff resources. You want points of interest to attract travelers and, and visitors to your city and your area. Lots and lots of reasons, lots of reasons for municipal Wi-Fi. And so, so that's, that's three things right there, service providers, enterprise, and uh, municipal Wi-Fi. So Chris, can you give us the, uh, your perspective from a researcher standpoint? Yeah, I sure can. <clears throat> so there are, in fact, many alternatives for, for backhauling on a, in a campus environment, um, like, we're, like we're talking about. But I have to say, 60 gigahertz spectrum is, is quite unique. And I um, just wanted to step back and just talk about you know, what, what, what can we do uh, to serve um, campus backhaul. So there are, uh, from a frequency perspective, there's like three different kinds of spectrum. There's licensed, unlicensed, and lightly licensed or shared spectrum. And um, what's happening here with 60 gigahertz is kind of similar to what mobile operators are talking about when they talk about fixed wireless. Uh, they're mostly talking about millimeter wave, um, which, is, which has a lot of similarities to 60 gigahertz, um, like we're uh, talking about here on this call. Um, but uh, the difference being 60 gig is unlicensed, so it allows um, pretty much anybody to, to deploy equipment in this in this um, in the spectrum. And uh, just to set the stage here, unlicensed spectrum generally uh, involves um, the following spectrums: 900 megahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gig, um, 60 gigahertz, like we're talking about here today, and and in soon 6 gigahertz. Um, but what's important to, to keep in mind is 60 gigahertz is unique because it can address dense environments and, and it is a, it's a line of sight technology. Therefore, it can be deployed in, in dense areas without uh, significant risk of, of interference, which is what you get uh, with most uh, every other unlicensed technology that I listed. So 60 gig is, is, um, is, uh, is very well suited for, for making um, uh, campuses from one building to another or bringing an internet connection to, to a campus, that kind of thing. And um, it's, a, it's quite, a, quite, a unique, um, quite a unique spectrum and, and the technology that rests on there is, is now, um, now quite exciting. Cool. So before we get to a couple of questions, I just see, Alan, do you have anything to add there? Yeah, I think uh, um, just the two more technical things. One is the six gigahertz high frequency. So you have a smaller antenna with high gain. So the 60 gigahertz radio is much smaller compared with like uh, 900 megahertz, 2.4 gigahertz or five gigahertz. That is one thing. The other thing is when we move to the 60 gigahertz, the beam width is narrower, but on the other side with the uh, beam forming antenna technology, uh, instead of people worry about beam forming, uh, the beam width is very narrow. On 60 gigahertz, we do the auto beaming, beam forming, then alignment become pretty easy. You literally point to the right direction, you're done. Uh, you don't need to do the, or fine tune for the, for the precise alignment. Uh, so that's a little bit unique about 60 gigahertz compared with those low frequency today. We have a few questions, guys. I wanna, I wanna just get these in here. Uh, and by the way, I wanna remind everybody attending, please send your questions via the Q&A just so uh, we don't get them lost in the chat. We've got a few in here. Uh, I'm just gonna start off with a few. And I, I think this is, uh, I don't know if this is a Darren or an Allen question. Let's toss it out there. Uh, this is from Joel. Do we see Cambium creating a 70 to 80 gigahertz product in the future? So uh, let me try to address this one. We are selling uh, a 70 to 80 gigahertz product today. It's called 820E and 850E, which deliver up to 10 gig full duplex capacity. You can also do the bunk, you know, X, X pick to make it even double like a 20 gig full duplex with 850E. That product is shipping since last year. Um, and that will be our 70, 80 gigahertz solution, you know, to say the, to do the backhaul for 60 gigahertz, or you do the fiber extension using the E-band. Roger that. Um, how many miles, how many MMLES 
can we use 60 gigahertz? Uh, I know it's used for short distance with high throughput. I guess I think the question here is what's the range? Uh, the range is really depends on, let's talk about point to multipoint. Uh, of course, depends on where you are and what the capacity you need, what the link availability you're looking for. But generally speaking, we talk about 200 meters to uh, 300 meters, you know, that's kind of like range. For point to point uh, for our radio, we can support up to uh, four miles or 6,000 6, meters. That's kind of like the, you know, the, the extreme. Uh, but really, realistically, we see, you know, the capacity, the gigabit capacity, availability, you know, uh, four, nine or three, nine and a half. Uh, we talk about, you know, really talk about a thousand meters range uh, as a reliable link with reasonable performance. Perfect. And just to confirm, 60 gigahertz is millimeter wave, correct? 60 gigahertz, yes. Perfect. You know, Alan, uh, Alan, let me just, uh, Cameron, if I can uh, jump, chime in for just a moment. And we look at the, the range of, of the 60 gigahertz. There's lots of different technology. And Cambium has, has products that go to 250 kilometers. So, you know, if, if, if range is your, if you wanted that 500 mile, uh, mile Tesla, you know, there, there's a car out there for you. Um, if you want 250 kilometers of, um, you know, of, of coverage with, with uh, you know, broadband, you know, Cambium's got the product for you. Uh, this, so this is a nice one. The reason we like the 60 gigahertz is it fits a nice little niche. It fits a little spot that we've been missing. And we're going to keep talking about this as we keep going. So I don't want to get a, too ahead of ourselves, but it does fit this nice little slot that's sitting in that 200, Alan, I'll say 200 to 350, 400 meters. It fits in that nice slot that we haven't really covered that well um, up until now. And it fits a right. whole set of new use cases use cases and businesses that people want to engage in that they've had to use essentially inferior technology to cover some of these use cases. Roger that.